for me, it's a pretty great experience. Being black, you know, connects me with the rich heritage of other black men in the United States. Our struggles and triumphs fuel me during the day. Being gay helps me connect with others in a way that's more intimate than some of my straight peers. Overall, it's a great experience. I do face challenges sometimes. I mean, this is still America. So I, at times, have faced discrimination in the workplace as well as church. Some people at work are still threatened by me for being black, while my church is threatened by my sexuality. It can be difficult at times, but I try not to let it bother me too much. I think my assets outweigh the challenges. <laughs> well, I can think of a few. <sighs> there was this one time in church, I was leaving service with my new boyfriend, and some women were whispering to each other. So as we got closer, I overheard them say, I didn't think we let people like that into God's house. And before I could say anything, someone else leaving said, God's house is a place for everyone, and God definitely don't like ugly. Uh, I was thankful that someone said something, but I realized that not everyone has that luxury. And there was this other time I was working the counter for a coworker who had stepped out for lunch. A customer came in and asked for the coworker, and I informed him that they're out to lunch and if there was anything I could help him with. But the customer told me that she didn't trust me to get her order right because of previous issues with my people. So <laughs> I just promptly told her that I was actually the manager doing a favor for a coworker and that she could take her racist business elsewhere. Now, even though these experiences don't happen often, they still sting and it reminds me of the unique position I'm in. Often, people look at me as a spokesperson for you know, two different communities. In fact, I'm just me and I can only speak for myself. I really have to thank my chosen family for helping me out with this kind of stuff. If it weren't for them, I wouldn't know where to go with all my questions. So now, when I need an HIV test, have a health question, or just want to know what's going on, I go to this cute little thrift store about 30 minutes away called Diamond in the Rough. The money from the store goes to a local health clinic. Three years ago, they started a small clinic in the back of the store just for HIV testing and sexual health questions. They even organize social events for the LGBTQ community, like barbecues and movie nights. Another place I go to for resources is my Alcoholics Anonymous, or AA, meeting. I've struggled with this issue for a couple of years, but I finally found a gay men's AA meeting where I get support and advice I can really use in life, and stay focused on my sobriety. My chosen fam also introduced me to a couple of online groups, and not Grindr, that I check regularly for community updates and new resources that people post. A lot of this stuff took me years to find, but I just keep searching the internet for stuff and asking questions. It really works great for me. One of the barriers that I encountered a few years ago was that the clinic I used to go to closed down. They had a, they had a, a sexual health center specifically for gay teens. They give out free condoms and and pamphlets on STIs and other stuff like that. You know, they even had a council that you can go up to and to talk to about anything you want. It was it was really awesome. But they started having issues with the funding and it closed down. It was really hard and it took me so long to find a place that I just felt comfortable going to to get HIV testing and to get resources for me and my own, you know? Where I grew up, there was this uh, LGBTQ nonprofit center where you could just go in and kick it. Uh, they had sexual health clinics twice a week, gay bingo on Thursday nights, and uh, resource counselors that sh they could help with whatever you needed. The only problem was that it was right across the street from the restaurant that I worked at all through high school. 
uh, everyone there knew my family, and I wasn't out back then. So I only got to go once when my job was closed for a holiday. Um, one of the directors there told me that they had just received funding at the center for support groups and events that could take place uh, outside of the clinic so I could attend them. I signed up for email alerts and I checked the website every week and I got to go to my first prom. Uh, I couldn't go to my own because I couldn't really go with anyone I liked. You know, if you really want something, you just sometimes have to go and research it for yourself. The craziest barrier that I had to get over was changing my primary doctor once I found out I was HIV positive. I had the same doctor since I was a kid, and he even still saw my mom and aunties. I went to this health fair with a friend and got one of those rapid HIV tests. That's how I found out. The counselor gave me a list of clinics and doctors that could really help with my situation and give me the support that I needed. But I knew right away that I couldn't go back to my family doctor with this news. That also meant that I had to explain to my mom why I was changing doctors. I was still a student at the time and on her health insurance. That was a crazy combo. <laughs> but I got through it. <sighs> After a ton of talks and crying, we finally got to a point where we chose a doctor together. And she even went to my first doctor's appointment with me. We're getting stronger every day. Hello, my name is Vincent Fuqua, and I'm a sexual health advocate and consultant here in San Francisco. I advocate for black gay men and men who have sex with men here in San Francisco. And one of the things that we do when we're advocating is regarding HIV testing, regarding looking at serial status, looking at disclosure. And for those individuals who are HIV positive, we ensure that they actually are linked to care and taking care of themselves. And also one of the important things that we do is we look at healthy relationships and we look at how racism, stigma, and homophobia impacts us. Here in San Francisco, we are fortunate that we have agencies that are actually able to help these individuals with those issues, like the San Francisco AIDS Foundation. I am also aware of the fact that not all the areas actually have these resources. So one of the things we encourage you to do is to go online and look at the resources for your county health department, your local health department, or your state health department. I am also aware that there may be challenges, and if that does come up, one of the things that you can do is just pay attention to the word of mouth of the resources that are out there or use social network like Facebook to put out there the needs that you actually have. Building a resource list takes time and planning. It can be as easy as asking our chosen family for advice on where they go, or get referrals from a service provider or online resource. And sometimes you'll have to do a lot of searching, which can be stressful. Don't let this throw you off your game. The time you spend finding resources will pay off for you and you'll gain the knowledge to become an effective advocate for yourself.